what's up? My name is Dom. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I typically make bookish content, movie content, and anything else in between because I like to do whatever I want on this channel and tonight is going to be bookish content. For today's video, we are going to be going over all of the books I read in the month of September. I completed seven books and I read a total of ten. Just three of them I haven't finished yet. And we're going to just jump right into the video. There are a lot of sounds going on right now. My fire alarm is on low battery. I'm going to try to cut out as many of the beeps as I possibly can. My neighbors are blasting their music and must be rollerblading across their floors. I don't know. Their, their floors are very loud. My dog is making noises. It's a very stressful Sunday, uh, but I have no other days to film this. So without further ado, please bear with me and let's get started. So the first book I read in September is a manga. I actually started a new manga series last month and it's Happiness by Shuzo Oshimi. So obviously the first book I read is volume one. So this is about a boy who has turned into a vampire. I did like the first volume. It reminds me of Tokyo Ghoul. Our main character, Makoto Okazaki, he's a very shy boy. He has his crushes here and there. And the whole reason this fiasco has started is because he meets a really weird girl who ends up turning him into a vampire. If you've read Tokyo Ghoul, if you watch Tokyo Ghoul, you know Ken Kaneki shy boy meets a really weird girl she turns him into a ghoul so i don't i don't know which came first and either way i wouldn't be shocked if one series was inspired by the other but i like it i love a good soft boy main character and the way he does the art is really cool because the way the surroundings are drawn when they're looked through a human eye and it's just you know normal lifelike realistic but then when it comes to the vampire's eye it becomes, I don't want to say abstract, that's not the word I'm looking for. I haven't taken an art class in a while, so I don't know what term I'm looking for. But the signs, the signs are just very obvious, especially when they look up the sky. I feel like I'm looking at the painting Starry Night. And I thought that was a really cool way to differentiate between the two visions. My only issue with the first volume so far is that the pacing is very fast. It doesn't leave a lot of room for characterization, but I liked it enough to keep going. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This takes place in the world where Cinderella has been dead for 200 years. And ever since then, a ball is held every year where all the girls of this town have to go and a man picks them for a wife. Our main character, who is a lesbian, does not want that. Um, there's more to the story that I don't really want to spoil but it shit ensues and then she ends up meeting a descendant of Cinderella and it turns out this love story they were all told about and is required reading is not it did not go the way she thought it did. Despite that interesting plot this took me a very long time to get into. You probably guess it's a very feminist story and I don't mind that I've read plenty of feminist fiction it's just my issue with this one is that it was incredibly on the nose and I don't like when my fiction is very on the nose. I like to think for myself. I like when authors are subtle about things. It's just that is a very difficult critique to give and I don't know how valid it is because this book is YA. So technically I am too old for it. I am way out of the age range. I would think this is good for like 15, 16 year old girls but then again I've read YA from my past and I have since reread them and I'm in other YA published today that's not as on the nose as this. It was kind of, it was kind of grating. It was also extremely slow going. The relative we read about in the synopsis, she does not show up until about halfway through the book, I want to say. And it does pick up once we meet her. It's just by that point, I was kind of, I was done with the story and I was just reading it to say I've read it. It had a nice ending. I can't criticize the ending too much and it did raise my rating. At first I was going to give this like a two out of five. I was actually going to give this a two out of five star in the beginning. But then the relative was introduced and I was like, all right, 2.5 out of 5 stars. But given the ending and how it all wraps up, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5, but it's a very low 3 out of 5. And this is the second book I've read by this author, and I didn't like the first one I read either. Um, I actually hated it more than I disliked this one. So I'm beginning to assume that Kaylin Bayron is just not the author for me. But then I read Happiness Volume 2 by Shuzo Oshimi, and I obviously cannot give a synopsis of this without spoiling the first one. But I will say I gave it the same rating. It was fun. New developments to the story. Okazaki is a better person than I am. Just my issue with this volume, something big is set up to happen and then it doesn't happen. Like you think the story's going to go one way and then it just ends up being kind of anticlimactic. And that that's throwing off the pacing for me. It's like the pacing is very fast, but it also feels like nothing is happening at the same time. So at this point, I was kind of worried with how I feel about this series. 
but again, 3.5 out of 5 stars. So next is a non-fiction book, which is Killer Clown, The John Wayne Gacy Murders by Terry Sullivan. If you don't know who John Wayne Gacy is, he was a murderer in Chicago, in the Chicagoland area. His hunting grounds were the suburbs and like very like a couple very specific neighborhoods in the northwest side of the city. He's basically known for being a clown by day and a serial killer at night because he would kidnap boys and men, their ages ranging between 16 to about 30, and then he would rape them, murder them, and bury them in his house. When he ran out of room in his house, he would throw them in the river. So one of the reasons I read this is because again I've always known his name and I've always known like the general idea of him like I knew he was a clown by day but I just didn't know the specifics how these crimes actually happen like I had no idea he was huge into Chicago politics he was huge in the Polish American community in Chicago and then people viewed him as a generally nice guy because he really liked to help people Unbeknownst to them, he was only helping so he could hunt out men. His excuse for all of this was that he was bisexual, later believed to be a gay man, and that's what he would blame. And then he would blame these men for being gay and coming on to him. And this book proves like more than half of his victims weren't actually gay men. So the first part of this book is the time when he meets his last victim all the way up until he was arrested. And it's a very comprehensive step-by-step -step process on how it all went down. I personally didn't mind that because it put things into perspective for me, but I did see a few reviews of people saying they don't like that. And I understand why, because it does come off as a textbook. And I believe most of us don't really like reading textbooks. So if you're interested in this book, just be weary of that. But the last half of the book drops that and it becomes more of an exploration of the psyche, like what triggered John Wayne Gacy to do all of this, why his trial happened the way it happened. I learned new things about the aftermath. I also just felt like this book was very respectful to the victims. It names as many as it can because there are some bodies that to this day still have not been identified. The author, Terry Sullivan, lists ways we can reach out for help if we ever need it. And I also feel like this book is very informative and trustworthy because obviously not only was the author on the case but he's a very well known he's actually very well known in Chicago apparently and he has worked on some huge cases for example the R. Kelly case so you're not reading this book from the point of view of a biography writer you're actually reading about a guy who walked the walk I ended up giving this book four out of five stars then I read Tales to Keep You Up at Night by Dan Problocki I went into this thinking it was a book of short stories but it's actually about a girl who finds a book in her missing grandmother's attic and it's called Tales to Keep You Up at Night and yes, it is a book of short stories, but they all interconnect. There is a warning from her grandma to not read the book, but now that she has started, she does have to read the entire book in order to solve this mystery. I went into this book for a good time. I didn't. That's actually not the synopsis I read when going into the book. So again, I went into it thinking it was a book of short stories. And while like, yes, that's true, there is an overarching narrative. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I think it made me like this book even better. The short stories all connect for one final conclusion and I thought it was a really fun conclusion. The stories are ghost and witch based which I'm always here for and it's always fun too because I read this only like a month after coming back from my Salem trip so I'm like really interested in witches right now so I thought this book was very fitting for the mood I was in. And it was a fun book I don't dislike this but I did not give it a really high rating because it had some creepy ideas that I would love to read in an adult book but at the end of the day this is a very low middle grade book like the audience is maybe 10, for 10, 11 year olds. So I'm definitely too old for the writing style and it did cause some of the stories to be a little bit predictable. But again, it was still very fun. So I gave this three out of five stars. Then I read Happiness Volume 3 by Shuzo Oshimi. This is the volume that made me a little worried about the series because I didn't give it a low rating, um, but I did give it three out of five stars. There was nothing special about this volume for me. It very much felt like it was there to get the story moving. And it goes back to my feelings of the second volume. I kept thinking something really big was gonna happen and then it didn't happen. So it was feeling anticlimactic for me. So I don't know, at this point, I didn't know if the story just wasn't for me or if I just had to change my expectations. I have not stopped reading it since filming this. I am up to volume six right now. So clearly it was still good enough for me to keep going. And I gave it three out of five stars. And the last book I completed in September is More Tales to Keep You Up at Night by Dan Problocki. This is the sequel to More Tales to Keep You Up at Night. It is the same concept, except rather than having Amelia finding a book, it's a new boy whose name I actually can't remember. He, his brother is in the hospital and he finds a backpack full of cassette tapes. He is told to not listen to them, but he starts listening and now that he started, he has to complete them in order to save his brother. And the stories in this one are somewhat more creature based. I didn't 
like this one as much as the first book. I was actually not liking any of the stories in the first half. The second half they got better and then when things started connecting the story was getting better too. I do like the connections. I do I did like the overarching plot and I think it had a nice ending. I did like that this book pulls a Lemony Snicket. Like Lemony Snicket is a character in a series of unfortunate events. Dan Hoblocki makes himself a character in this book and I actually really did like how this book connected to the first one. It doesn't really need to and you can very much read this as a standalone. Any connections to the first book are more so easter eggs in this but it was still cool. But overall I gave this book 2.75 out of 5 stars. And now for the books I did not complete in September. We have the instructions by Adam Levine. This is about a boy named Geryon who has been kicked out of three schools. He's in a special program at his new school where a bunch of the bad kids stay and he thinks he is the messiah of Judaism. This is my big book of the year. It came in two separate volumes for some reason so I finished the first volume in September and I am taking a break until November so I can get to my spooky reads and not only that but I was not liking this like at all. So I didn't want to waste my time on it anymore. However, the last chapter of this is when shit started hitting the fan and a ton of people online are saying the second half is much better. So I'm debating picking it up again. We will see. I also started Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is about a woman who marries a Maxim de Winter. He is a widower because his wife Rebecca has passed away a year ago and his new wife, the unnamed protagonist, her life is consumed by the essence of Rebecca. I am really, really enjoying this as a filming. I only have about 50 pages left and I don't want to say any more because I want to save my thoughts for my October wrap up, but this is definitely one of the best books I read so far this year. And then we also have a book of short stories which is modern masters of horror by a bunch of people we got Stephen King George A Romero John Coyne etc etc not too impressed with a lot of these people so far there's only one story that genuinely creeped me out anything else at best was just okay and then all the other ones that weren't just okay I actually hated but I'm gonna keep reading since I'm not really a DNF her that's my main problem why I'm probably gonna keep reading the instructions and hopefully another story creeps me out. But that is it for this video. It is very hard to film when you have a beeping fire alarm because I'm trying to talk around it so I can easily cut them out of the video. Um, this is going to be a bitch to edit. But I have to go cook dinner now. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the drill. And without further ado, I'm going to peace out and I'll see you guys later. Ciao, tutti.